The interesting thing about competition climbing is that the boulders we see on our screens are so movement, timing and positioning dependent, there might be a decent argument for not really being able to grade them using the generic climbing grades at all. Grades aside, they're still extremely tricky as my guest today knows only too well. Ross is a comp climber from the USA and today we're recreating a World Cup replica, digging into what gives comp climbing its difficulty and asking what would it look like if you could scale comp boulders to an intermediate climber? This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, I am in San Diego, a slightly different location to usual, and I am with a guest. This is Ross. Hello, Ross hello. This is a competition climber based currently out of San Diego. Yeah. We also do a fair bit of coaching. Mm -hmm. So today, what do we have in store behind us? We have a simulation of the first World Cup climb from the finals I was in at the Salt Lake City World Cup two years ago. So it's just these yellow ones and it flies out to here and then a big move out to this yellow one and then back to the finish there. Mm -hmm. But we thought it'd be fun to make a replica of a climb that I'd tried before but didn't actually do in the competition and see if we could learn kind of some fundamentals about how to climb it in the most efficient way possible yes. and then add some different variations so we could kind of try the same moves and yeah. test it out. Yeah, so I think what's really special about today's video is that level of like adaptation. It's pretty uh, rare or like a unique experience for yeah. me to be able to climb alongside a very experienced World Cup comp climber on the same boulder. Okay, so this is a replica of one of the finals problems from Salt Lake City in 2021. 21. 21. Which? 22. So you're in the finals in Salt Lake? Yeah. And this? This was the first boulder. Okay. So, we'll throw up a quick video. <laughs> um, sorry, I have to see it for stealing it. Um, <laughs> just kidding. But basically it was, you start on this kind of four point start here and then jumped out to this volume with a hold kind of similar to this. Mm -hmm. um, the hold at the comp was probably better than this, but it was a little bit more overhanging. Um, so we made it a bit worse. Control that and then huge swing out, stand up on top of a volume and grab a pretty good jug around the corner and then control that swing and then a bit more tenuous slow top so we have this volume without anything on it and you got to kick the foot over and then kind of rock over the foot to match the finish there. Okay, I guess we should say as well that the extra holds on the wall are yeah. not part of the replica, they're, they're like adapted mm -hmm. options. Like we have the luxury right now of having the whole wall and having Ollie with the drill so we can kind of learn the fundamentals of the movement on these easier variations and then carry that through to the harder version, so. I think especially for people, like competition style moves can feel really intimidating if yeah. your uh, experience with climbing is like the more regular style totally, of totally. set. So I really like it when there's like ways to try moves mm -hmm. or like ways to make up your own moves. Totally. To learn. Um, All right, let's go. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> I should have done it in finals. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that like that was a classic example of a move that's not physically super tricky, but it becomes really difficult when you're not climbing it well. If that makes sense. Okay. And I was a little bit distracted, and I was telling Hannah earlier just the decision fatigue that comes from a couple of days of competition. And then in my case, like my first time making finals at a big competition like that, I was just so exhausted and like the dopamine was Too fully fine. depleted. So, <laughs> uh, which is why it's even more important to focus on the basics and climb it as well. Cause I didn't have any excess strength to like burrow yeah, through yeah, the yeah. moves, you know, but live and learn. Basically right now I'm just looking at the positions and looking at this hold and thinking, okay, I need to be on the left side of this to pull perpendicular with the face of this hold and then explode and get to this position. This hold I want to be under because it's going to be better uh -huh. underneath it. And I'm trying to kind of jump up and land with my weight coming down um, so I can absorb it better with this hold instead of swinging. And then for this move, really trying to make space from the wall so I can generate up and over this foot Again, imagining if there wasn't any hands, like how would I stand mm -hmm. just over that? And that's kind of the first step in that move. And then I'll generate again to the next hold. And then looking at this position, I want to be underneath that volume. So especially on slopers, it pays to be 
pulling perpendicularly to the face of the hold, like underneath the wall. Um, and then for that last move, probably getting like a foot on the press or something so I can push into that end position mm -hmm. there. Nice. Yeah. Wait, actually, we didn't have this foot, right? Come on. Yes! Oh! oh. Sweet! Okay, that's cool. What I forgot to visualize was exactly where <laughs> this hold was. And it's blocked, so that adds another layer of comp complexity into it. For you, we could do that same, same sort of start, but maybe with this blue one. Mm -hmm. um, and then jumping to orange and yellow, and then you have this foot to stop. And if we think about the end position, so this hold, actually both of these holds and this foot are better when you're kind of slightly over to this left side. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, right? So we're yeah. pulling perpendicularly to the face of that hold, pushing into this. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're trying to generate too, and basically land in that position without any excess momentum. Whilst we attempt to figure out this boulder, let me chat about the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. Whilst we've been out traveling in the US, Squarespace has been a crucial tool for us to keep on top of our merchandise business from overseas. The seamless integration of our shipping service with Squarespace's commerce feature means that I feel in control of stock levels, orders coming in, and the entire shipping process remotely from Come my on. phone. Nice, nice, nice. Super good. If you run your own e-commerce or merch yeah. business, I really can't recommend Squarespace enough. You can get 10% off your first purchase yeah. of a website or domain with code Hannah Morris using the link below. Oh, oh that was sick. Okay, I ended up, I was like in, 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 and then must have turned out because I like landed. Yeah, that's awesome. Like just having that awareness of how you land. Mm -hmm. Like I love analyzing how you fall to make the generation okay. better. So yeah, you're spot on where you landed not super square to the wall and a bit out from the wall. Uh -huh. So now when we generate, maybe uh, you did a really good job of making space. So um, I've been using this phrase like space time position, right? Yeah. We want to make space from the wall, like physically let ourselves out from the wall. So we have room to generate into the wall. Like you'll notice okay. you were here and couldn't do anything. You're locked in, sure. but then you came back so you uh -huh. could pull better. So that was great. Step one. And now step two is time. So we're gonna try and make time okay. over this foot while we're close into the wall. Okay. So then we can land in that end position. Okay, so it's trying to find that like point of maybe weightlessness is yeah. the wrong word, but like no, the, I, I the like bit that. where you're like, I'm not pulling. Totally. Okay, okay. Come on. Yeah, oh, but nice. Like, okay, so I do this all the time. It's the commitment, like the hips need to go in, yeah. but it feels safer to be like, ah. yeah. so I do that a lot. <laughs> okay. But you had, you had the hands and hips were in the right position for a moment, right? Like yeah. this is it, but you need something to stop, yeah. stop your momentum. It's just the commitment. It's every, like every time on moves like this, it's just the... That's why the warm up comes yeah. in handy so much where if this is less risky, like imagine if we had done a bunch more of that stuff, mm -hmm. that's even more scary and more risky than this, then it's so much easier to come to this and be like, oh, I'm, I'm prepared yeah. for this. Like I've already committed to yeah. more sketchy you do stuff. Really scary stuff in your warm up, then it's all relative. Yeah, and nothing exactly. feels as scary. And then that builds. Like if you're doing scary stuff like that every single warm up, then at some point you're just, you're psyched. I'm out of the shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so do you reckon, uh, think less about getting the yellow, like the second yellow, like just go for the I think, yeah, get this first, stabilize, and then you can then help, go. yeah. Yeah! So it's a teeny bit better. Give yours a go? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so now's a time where, even though I've only done it once, I've like visualized it a couple times. Sure. I mean, I guess I've tried this move <laughs> a lot, but uh, so like closing my eyes, whew, taking a deep breath, running through it one more time, how I'm going to generate over that foot. And then like that last breath for me is kind of a reset where now I'm just 
focused and trying to not think about anything, basically. Mm -hmm. That was hard. That was amazing. Good climb, Ollie. <laughs> oh, I should have brought a chalk bag. I was sliding on that last one so hard. That went well. Second time. Yeah. I told you I should have done it in the comp. <laughs> yeah. That was really close. It was better. It's getting closer. Brain stop working. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Off the wall for a moment. Yeah. We're gonna try and just visualize you're doing that same movement. So we're here and then jump. Yeah, exactly. And we can do that one more time. Boom. And then imagine like that little like that. the jump and pull or the grab and pull we did over there. That's what we're trying to do and engage as fast as we can with this right hand. So okay. you can kind of see how all of the different warm up things we did sure. are coming together where we have the fast twitch yeah. like engagement of that green jump and then the accuracy of the off the wall jump. Style of move has become almost like a self fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> like a, um, I guess it's like the negative power of like self talk is I, have this move pigeonholed as something that I'm not good at. So every time it comes up, I'm like, oh, I'm not good at that. And then, yeah, self-fulfilling prophecy. This is where like, yeah. positive like psychology tactics yeah. kind of come in handy too, where maybe yeah, you're getting a little thing. flustered or whatever, oh, but yeah, just, sure. yeah, I was just close your eyes, take a big breath, and like, then, wow. I, um, even, even like in the language that I'm using, I'm like, oh, I really struggle with this. I'm not very confident on this kind of move. So like, yeah. obviously I'm going into every attempt, like, oh, oh, yeah. so unsure. I want to try this big move out to the right again mm -hmm. and see how controlled I can be. That's another thing I like to do is, even after I've done a move, repeating it in different variations to then have the confidence of knowing like you found the best beta for it. So like that time, that felt a lot easier without the helix actually, because mm -hmm. the helix just added unnecessary moves. Um, but cool, for that right? last move, I preferred the foot up beta. Yeah. The foot up beta is my, a little bit more like risky because it's harder <laughs> to get this foot up, but I think easier overall. I'm going for the black foot. We're just gonna it's, adjust it's, the black one so it's slightly. Fist straight because I. More comfortable position. Like I'm not falling, I'm jumping. Oh. Does that make sense? Like it's not like I actually yeah, really like commit to like sticking up and it and then fall. More. I'm gonna move it a little. Back. It's like yeah, I just touch it, it and then I bounce off. Yeah, or like I, I'm jumping off, which is frustrating. I struggle with that too sometimes where I. Maybe don't do a move in the best way possible, and I know like that position's off. So then I'll just let go. Yeah. But also, you learn a ton from like really committing to those, where you're like, oh, like actually, that was doable, or actually, like I realized my hips should be here. Mm 
and there's a very fine line between like fully committing to a move even though you know you haven't done it the right way and maybe yeah. wasting skin and energy yeah. but also maybe you're losing out on the learning from that so like in a comp 100% like I commit to every single move and like try yeah. and grab yeah. it and I think a lot of or a part of what I find scary about this is that I'm not actually sure what it feels like when it goes wrong because I've not let it go wrong yet mm, interesting. and so that's why we have pads. Make the, you... Yeah, if I can make the risk analysis that like, okay, I might fall, but it's not going to go much more wrong than that. Ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Um, Ollie this has This is her kindly... first attempt, actually. This is, <laughs> yeah. this is, this is the, a different the boulder, full World so Cup variation. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Ollie has kindly set me some uh, like nicer variations. So I um, have another handout left, which is helping me to kind of like pull back, I think. Yeah, yeah, I would say that. Yeah, it is. And then I'm like really trying to do the, the hip swing and out. This hold is nice, that's not changed. Uh, but the foot has come up Yeah, a little, a little bit. So it's... Okay, yeah, a little nicer to go to, a little less intimidating. Yeah, it's really nice. It's like, I feel a quite unique opportunity for, for me to be able to uh, tweak a boulder in this way to yeah. bring it kind of more in line with what I feel confident to try, uh, which is a really cool experience. And then I could see it working really well. It's like a training tool if you're yeah. able to, to be able to then like take away some of the tweaks and slowly for build sure. back up to there. Anyway, and I'm procrastinating. I'll get on this folder. <laughs> you got it, you got it. <laughs> Big breath and then come in. Yes! Oh, ho, ho, look at that. The breath. Oh, Nicely done. I should have like carried that was on. Sick. But <laughs> yeah, no, that's just great. Now you have to repeat done. it. Thank you. That was awesome. What was the difference? So I think the difference was having like a lot more information about how it felt. Having yeah. taken a fall, possibly. Totally. But the thing that I did differently on that attempt that I didn't do on the other attempts was have that real, like, he told me to breathe. Yeah. And, like, close my eyes, imagine myself doing the move. Yeah. You didn't and hesitate at all. Like, you just pulled on, boom. Being, you, like... You, like, surprised yourself. You're like, oh, my God, I already did it. <laughs> That's cool. Sweet. Again? Yes. All right. Yeah. Oh, so chill. We gotta turn it up and make it harder now. <laughs> oh. uh, you can put your left foot back here as well if you wanna. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would work. Oh, nice. wow, okay. You got it. Ooh. Yeah. Commitment issues. Am I going to this red? Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> okay, this one, the generation is really tricky. Um, but I you had the right idea where you need to swing this leg use around. My leg is a exactly, to get into the wall. Yeah. Um, and ideally, because these holds are, are decently good, yeah. um, especially this orange one, it's not actually, like you can't use it that much until you're like back here. So even kicking out, and then you have way more. To kick in with. Three for three. Yeah. You can do that. You can do that. You gotta really drive with the uh, the right foot slightly. Cause we could just move the. Yeah, I could move it so like... Smooth. Just one in. I feel like the problem... What I would, like, say the... The thing you should focus on for the next attempt is generating, like, up. Off off, like, you're having the rightward momentum, but because this foot is kind of higher, mm. uh, it's difficult to make time over the foot, so you're, like, hitting this, and it's kind of pushing you out and back. Yeah. So you have to, like... Throw this up and kind of coordinate 
pulling with our arms up with driving this hip up. Uh, yeah. So then we can land down. Yeah, it down very on much that. feels like I'm just kind of like kicking out yeah. rather than trying to land and springboard off. Okay, this attempt, just focus on kicking all the way back and then flying. Like, forget about the hold completely. Okay. This is one kind of cue I really like to coach. Um, well, imagine there's no hold at all and you're just trying to stand over the foot. Okay. Um, and then we'll go from there. Nice. Okay, so. Going you got foot on, like... foot on blue still, I think is easier. And then kick all the way back and then just fly to the right. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> like there's so many subtleties. For me, like as a coach, sometimes it's hard to like just pick like one because even like when I'm doing the move, there's a, ten different things I could focus on. So it's like picking what's gonna make the the biggest difference. But I think pulling with the arms and the legs for you is gonna yeah. be really important. Like you're doing a good job kicking and using this leg to generate. Pushing but we have to yeah. So back. we're pulling here and then pushing at the end to really throw as far over as we can. Uh, okay, it's a little more hesitant, but... That's better, you think that's better? Yeah, Definitely a boulder where my mind is more the limiting factor, like, surprise, surprise. Um, be interesting to see whether or not it just returns to me, like riding a bike. Never was good at riding bikes. <laughs> Woo. Brings to an end my World Cup blocks experience. With Ross, <laughs> you've definitely taught me a lot. I'm super Thank psyched you. to get this move here. I'm not gonna lie, when we first started it, I was like, this is not, this is not gonna happen <laughs> for me today. And then actually you really helped me to like compartmentalize what I was doing and not see it all as this like super intimidating yeah. set of moves. It is intimidating like, as a whole, but then yeah. you gotta break it down. Like just focus on this. And like with some of the adaptations, it just like kind of all came together. So yeah, yeah I was psyched on that. Thanks very when, much for your time. Oh, for sure, it was a great time. Um, yeah, this is kind of what a generic, I'd say like learning session looks like for me. Sometimes the sessions are more like training oriented where you have like specific exercises, but a lot of the time you just come to the gym and play around yeah. and yeah, yeah. try and learn as much as you can from each move. And that first move uh, you did over there, cool to see you try it now without this left hand. Yes. You can yeah, make yeah. it a slightly harder uh, yeah. and see if what you learn with both hands carries over to just doing it yeah. with that one hand. Yeah, definitely. We were saying before, like it's so nice to like scale things back and mm -hmm. make things easier to then build a really good foundation yeah. to start building back to totally. harder moves. Exactly. So, yeah, thank exactly. you very much. For sure. I am going to leave links to Ross's YouTube channel in the description of this video. Ross has Thank you very a great much. YouTube channel where he vlogs his, you do like outdoor, indoor. Yeah, a bunch of stuff, of some like behind the scenes with the US team and then lately a lot more coaching stuff as well. Um, so yeah, you can find some links to my coaching business or yeah. uh, website, mind to motion where we do a bunch of clinics and comps all around just creating uh, learning environments for athletes. So. Yeah, yeah, amazing. So if you're in the San Diego area or totally elsewhere, it seems like you yeah, we're kind of going all over the US. So <laughs> hit check it out. <laughs> get some coaching. Start flying around on comp balls if you're a little yeah. intimidated by them, like me. For sure. Yeah, and thanks very much for a good session. For sure. Hopefully, like that's now your new baseline to. Yeah, I'm gonna go risk. back and try. Yeah, we're gonna try the 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 bigger move. Next time so, you're gonna yeah. go to the gym, like I'll the first move you pull on is gonna be like <laughs> twice as hard as that. And you're like, oh yeah. my gosh. No, the first, next time I go to the gym, I'm gonna do like a good, or for a dynamic session, I'm gonna do yeah. a good like mind warm up, get in the gear, cause that's missing from my sessions. So. Totally, I look forward to seeing it. Cool.